Hello, and welcome to Solo Playthroughs. We are about to go back to Jagged Earth Spirit Island with Vengeance as a Burning Plague. Um, I posted on a couple of different social media sites that I was starting to, to look, get a little worried that all of the high or very high complexity spirits in Jagged Earth focused more on defense and control not that they couldn't do offense i mean obviously downpour has its ways where you can repeat powers and get a bunch of offense uh and starlight oop just not the camera yeah we're good uh starlight uh, has his uh you could build him to be an offensive uh force of sorts but getting the chunk damage that you can get and destruction you can get from like ocean and wildfire and um just wasn't seeing that in the jagged earth high complexity or very high complexity spirits yet and then as i've joked i fell in love with a lizard a beautiful lizard at that i mean look at that face how could you not just just feel the warm and fuzzies inside this spirit is really bonkers there's a, a bit of brinksmanship ism if that's a word it's not whatever it is now F just like a wildfire where you, you are testing the limits of, of getting blight on the board you will probably go blight of the island earlier than you might want to with with most spirits and then there's a way of using that that blight to your advantage for damage the the, the disease mechanics with vengeance are fascinating and interesting it's just a really 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 cool spirit and i've beaten every single adversary on level four all seven of them and never really felt like i was in control except for two of those seven wins <laughs> so, and just was like either with russia just kind of backed into a, a level three fear, fear victory with uh with uh with habsburg habsburg is by far the, the most challenging i just find level four habsburg that adorable mechanic is just bananas uh, but uh, and and with Scotland just kind of ended up oh I just destroyed everything except for two explorers and that's just just the power inherent in vengeance that is very very cool so hopefully we'll get a, a really solid playthrough today as always with all brinksmanship aspects of board games whether you're playing Calvin Wright or Arkham or you're doing wildfire things could go bad very quickly and this might be a shorter playthrough than is ideal but hopefully we can pull off a level four victory I will bump up to level four with vengeance and part of the reason i'm a little comfortable doing that is because i'm not going to go back to habsburg we've already done habsburg twice so i will be doing level four russia or level four scotland and let's actually pick that now because that's going to matter for setup so one two three is russia four five six is scotland we go to russia uh, i don't love russia I, I find them probably my least favorite adversary but probably because they're uh, the one that gives me the most trouble so it is what it is but they will uh, be a nice challenge for us for sure I think the level of difficulty just to, maybe with my playing style and, and my comfort level uh, I think Scotland would have been a better matchup so let's see how this plays out so we're hanging I'm gonna roll for the board I rolled a two so we're gonna go to board B that's fine knocking over cards it's what i do and then we can go ahead and get the island set up i'll get everything else set up and then we'll come back to mr vengeance all right we have a dahan in land one we have a city in land two we have two dahan in land three we have a blight in land four we're gonna have a disease in land two before i forget well how could you forget about disease with this guy and then we have a uh, beast in land five we will also have a beast and an explorer in land eight we will have that's because of russia we will have a town in land six we'll have a dahan in land seven and two dahan in land eight cool cool that's gonna be a nice board for us so i'm going to shuffle the event cards get that done and we'll shuffle the blight of island cards as always i will roll a d20 because i do not trust a true cut over time with my blight of island cards i rolled a six yep there we go one two three four five and the sixth card will 
be our Healthy Island card. Now, two of those 16 cards are the still Healthy Island, and I think three of them are two, only two Blight cards, and I, again, I with a Brinksmanship Spirit, you are... I'm less less and less likely the more I play this to ever keep the two island the two blighted uh two blight blighted island cards. I mean some of them are can be hugely helpful. I've definitely had a number of wins in the past with them, but as my playing style has changed, I usually just kinda take the option to discard it and, and go to another card that doesn't have that has more than two blight on it. But um especially with, with vengeance, I, I just don't see a world where you could ever think about keeping those uh, either of those any of the two blight Blighted Island cards. All right, shuffling up the the powers again. My major powers are in blue. My uh, minor powers are in green. Vengeance is like a lot of spirits. One of those spirits where it is very normal that you will never feel the need to take a major power. Uh, his power, uh, his powers, his innate powers are super strong, and you are going to want to unlock them with a lot of card plays and the best way to have a lot of card plays every turn is to make sure your cards don't cost too much energy right so if you are getting three or four energy a turn it's a lot easier to play three or four cards that are minor powers or unique powers than it is if you start getting some of those expensive majors right so story time with craig vengeance as a burning plague and again i mean just the names of these <laughs> these uh, spirits are just it's so cool and, and, and such an interesting part of this game all right so a spirit of vengeance anger and retribution in its incarnation as burning plague it slumbers in a simmering volcanic pool awakening at unpredictable intervals or when roused through supplication by one wronged most dahan consider this foolhardy for it vents its wrath on entire communities and its pestilence may spread anywhere Clans with a close relationship to Hearth Vigil have less to fear, but still deem it wise and humane not to push their luck. It is unclear whether its recent waking is due directly to the ravaging of the invaders or to some spirits, please. Set up, we will put one of our presents uh, off the board. It is a destroyed presence. And then we will put two presents on the starting board. One's going to go in the land that has a blight because again we are <laughs> this weird plague thing so we are we kind of go hand in hand with blight and then we will put one in a wetland without any dahan so that is going to go to land six play style not so powerful early but can become a late game juggernaut absolutely the summary of powers is pretty bananas offense 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 and as a result when you get offense you also generate fear because you know that's what happens when your stuff gets destroyed you get scurred like the adversaries do all right we are going to put the rest of us on the board uh, actually i will read some of the special rules special rules the terror of a slowly unfolding plague when disease would prevent a build on a board with your presence you may let the build happen removing no disease all right you more disease on the board is better for you as you'll see and if you do that so if you choose to ignore the effect of disease and let the build happen you get a fear so that's a nice way to get some extra fear for sure all right so that's rule number one the second rule on here is lingering pestilence when your presence is destroyed by anything except a spirit action add a disease where each destroyed presence was that can be really bananas so in some ways you like set traps that you almost want your presence to be destroyed at times but obviously when your presence is destroyed that almost invariably means that you're adding blight which gets us back to the brinksmanship aspect of this spirit that we were talking about earlier finally there's a third rule wreak vengeance for the land's corruption your actions treat blight on the island as also being badlands that's only your actions it's very cool right so if you get three disease and a badlands on there they can really add up to some sick or blight on there can add up to some sick damage abilities because your innate powers which i'll go to those first and then we'll go up to the rest of the board innate powers epidemics run rampant it's a fast power range is one away but the target land must have disease the powers damage is also done separately to the dahan in addition to being done to the invaders so again as his story told you sometimes the dahan are a little scared to deal with this dude because 
he's a little destructive and his plague can often kill some Dahan as collateral damage to what else he's doing, which again, similar to the big powers, offense spirits. I mean, ocean again, drowns in uh, Dahan at times, etc. So it, it can definitely happen. Um, that's fine though. So you are doing Targlin has to have the disease and if you uh if you have one fire and three animal elements you can do one damage per disease you have in the land if you have one water two fire and four animal elements you can get plus one damage so if you have uh, per disease so if you have one disease on there that's all of a sudden two doing two damage if you have one disease and a blight on there well again your blight counts as badlands and this is one of your powers so that would be three damage which is really nice and then if you have three water three fire and five animal elements you can do plus one damage per disease on top and then you get a fear per disease as well and remove a disease honestly i've had the elements to make that work i've never had it never made strategic sense so it's unlikely that we're going to see that in this game the other innate power is savage revenge it's a slow power range is zero target land is a city or a town or, or a land that has a city or and or towns if, if you have three sky, the power has plus one range. Very hard to get three sky with uh, vengeance because you're always digging for cards that have either fire and animal tags. And it's unlikely that it, and a lot of those cards don't, in addition, have sky. Uh, you do start with two unique powers that have sky. However, that costs a total of four. And again, if you, if you even if you combine those, you're, you're kind of lacking in the fire that you're going to want. For savage revenge so it's really hard to to get that plus one range uh however the rest of the power is if you have three fire and one animal elements you can do one damage if you have four fire and two animal elements you would do plus two damage so three damage total and if you have five fire two sky and two animal elements you could do plus three damage for a total of six damage again i have yet to unlock that at all in my playthroughs uh, as vengeance so his tracks, the energy track is his, her tracks, their tracks is energy is one, two, uh, animal, three, four. And then the card play track is one, two, fire, two, three, three, four. You will likely get up to that three or four range for sure. And you're, you're definitely going to get both of those elements unlocked on your presence tracks as soon as possible. Growth options, there were three. It is a pick one spirit. The growth option one is reclaim cards, gain a power card, gain one energy. Growth option two is add a presence to a land with a town, city, or blight. Uh, and then you can do that twice and within two of where you have presence. And then growth option three is gain a power card, add a presence or a disease, one away from where you have presence, and you gain an energy. So most likely we'll be doing a lot of growth option We'll be doing growth option three, most likely to start the game. We'll see. And then we'll be kind of going from there. But I, one of the nice things about this, this spirit is game state really prevents you from, and just the nature of how he's built, uh, it really prevents you from having like a set plan too much. You, it's like a giant puzzle every game. Uh, do you want to add disease instead of presence? Is that going to make sense? When do you reclaim your cards? Do you have the cards in your hand that you can delay reclaiming your cards one more turn? All of that kind of comes into consideration in a, in a pretty dynamic way with Vengeance. So it's cool. It's a cool one. I'm, I'm excited to get this on the channel. And uh, hopefully Russia doesn't give me too many fits. Speaking of Russia... Russia has an additional loss condition. Uh, hunters swarm the island. So any so Russia, one of Russia's things is that it, some of its rules will destroy beasts. For any beast that is destroyed by blight because of Russia's rules, we put on the card. And if there's any more ever any if there's ever more beasts on Russia's card than there is on our little island board here, we lose. So that's something to be monitoring and does come into effect when you're considering i mean it's, it, it, you can see the tension there right because vengeance you kind of want blight on the board at some level because of your it, you can treat it like badlands but you got to make sure that you're not allowing ravaging wherever it would destroy a beast because then again if you trigger an automatic loot loss condition it doesn't matter how strong vengeance's powers would be because again you lose hence automatic loss hmm who would have thought all right we're doing terra level four or, or Russia level four. So the 
fear deck for Russia level four is four four four. Four four four. Four 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 four. Lots of fours. All right. What was the four four exactly? So the escalation for Russia is on each board. You're gonna add two explorers among lands with beasts. Every time you see that escalation symbol. And that could be brutal, right? Because one of you know, we'll, we'll talk about that as we go through the various levels. So again, all the levels are cumulative, as everyone knows by now. Hunter, seek, shell, and hide is level one. During setup on each board, we added this beast and this explorer. During play, explorers do plus one damage. When Ravage adds Blight, as I said before, it destroys one beast in a land that has Blight added to it, even if it, that Blight is because of Cascade. So you need to be really careful there. A sense of impending disaster. These little suckers, not only do they do plus one damage, they're hard to kill because the first one in a land, if he's about to be killed, instead of being killed, he is pushed, but it does allow you to generate a fear when you do that, right? So there's a bit of a trade-off, which does... That fear does add up over time, so you will find yourself with a lot more fear victories against Russia than some of the other adversaries. All right, and that level number three is competition among hunters. Ravage cards also match lands with three or more explorers. If it already matched the Ravage card, it still ravages just once. So that's something to really monitor. So you can see how that escalation ties into that, because now you're adding just extra explorers and if you ever have three in a land then there's only eight lands to go here and they're hard to kill so you can see how more and more explorers makes this game more and more of a challenge against russia and level four what was i thinking accelerated exploitation when making the invader deck put one stage three card after each stage two card and i will show you how that works it is no bueno but especially when you're well, it's almost like a trade-off, right? Because when you have the stage three cards, you're putting four explorers on the board just in four different lands, generally, unless there's not a source. And when you have the stage two cards, the escalator, unless it's coastal lands and you're adding three explorers, the escalator will trigger on the other on the other stage two cards, and then you're <laughs> then you're adding four explorers anyway, the two that match the card and the two for the escalation, right? So you're just adding somewhere between three to four explorers every round it's usually going to be four and that can be really brutal again there's only eight lands there's only so many lands you could put these suckers and you got to make sure there's not three in any one land unless you have some kind of way to deal with that so i'm going to roll a die that's a one on this die so these are our three stage one cards i'm going to get rid of one of the stage two cards so again there's five stage two here i roll the die that's a three that's out and we will roll the die for the stage three cards all right dang i rolled a five out so we have our stage one cards now i'm going to take a stage two card a stage three card a stage two card a stage three card a stage two card a stage three card a stage two card and the last two stage three cards that is our awful grotesque ridiculous invader deck all right I'm gonna put that there i can lose i had the scotland tokens laid out just in case i rolled scotland i did not and we'll get some dice available for my elements and i think that is good let's go through vengeance as a burning plague's unique powers all right so i'll put them in cost order energy cost so the only unique power you have that doesn't cost any energy is fiery vengeance now it does have a cost to use target spirit removes one of their destroyed presence from the game hey you coincidence you start with one destroyed presence and you can target any spirit so in a cooperative game you could have this another spirit do this but obviously in our game vengeance will be targeting themselves great so uh once you remove one destroyed presence from the game then you could generate one fear and one damage in one of your spirit's lands. Now, again, Blight acts as Badlands. So this would be one of your powers that would do two damage in that land. So it's a good way to pick off some towns. All right. And now, again, you can play this. It doesn't cost zero and have it out. But if you want to use it, you have to have that destroyed that destroyed presence. Like we saw that with uh, Fractured Days, where sometimes you play a card and you actually don't even have the cost to use but you're just playing it for the elements. Plague Bearers is a one energy cost 
card. Oh, by the way, so Fiery Vengeance has a Sun and a Fire element. Hence, yeah, Fiery Vengeance without a Fire element would be kind of dumb. And uh, now we have Plague Bearer. So Plague Bearer has a, has a Fire element, a Water element, and a Animal element. It's a slow power, range two away from where you have presence. The target land must have disease. Once you play it, you go one fear if invaders are present. And then for each disease, you have to push two explorers, towns, Dahan, whatever combination. And you can move one disease token with each pushed piece, right? So we'll see how that plays out. Now you don't have, you may move the disease. You don't have to, you do have to do uh, the, the rest of it. All right, uh, strike low with sudden fevers. It has a fire element, a sky, a mountain, and an animal element. It is a fast power, range one away from where you have presence. The target line must also have disease. So you see, again, three of your powers have to have disease. Hmm, but, but you, <laughs> seems like you probably should get disease on the board. Uh, it generates one fear and invaders skip ravage actions. And then finally, last but not least, another two energy cost card. It has a sky, a water, and a animal element. Fetid breath spreads infection. It is a slow power. Range one from where you have presence. The target line must have invaders. You generate a fear and you can add a disease. So that is our unique powers. I will be right back after this quick break. I know something new. Be excited. Hey, Greg here with a quick announcement. I want to give a shout out to Michael Wright. Now, Michael was one of my earliest solo playthroughs patrons, and I have so appreciated his support. And he has supported me long enough and at a tier high enough that he gets this fancy dancy shout out in the middle of one of my videos. So, Michael, thank you. I'm so glad you appreciate the Spirit Island videos and the Maiden Night videos, and there will be plenty of both of those coming forward and hopefully a lot more on top of that. Now look, if you want to be like Michael and you want to think about supporting this page, you can go on my Patreon page. The link is down below in the description of this video. Go there, see if there's one of the, there's three tiers on there. See if one of those tiers makes sense for you. And if not, that's cool. Again, I love working on this channel. I have a lot of ideas of things I want to do from an equipment standpoint, from a game standpoint, to continue to make this channel bigger and to make it better. And if you can support it, that would be awesome so michael thanks again and back to the game all right let's get into the action i will uh we have to do the final step of setup it is an initial explore into mountains all right so we got one there one there not awful Already has the Z's, which is nice. Do you want to prevent that build? For sure. So now I'm debating. I think this will work. Yeah, let's do this. I'm going to add two presents. I mean, normally I do the gain power card one, but I think this is slightly better. This could actually be a, a actually a new combo of things for me, which could be good. All right, let's see what happens. So trying something new. So we're going to put two presents on the board. I'm going to put one. Ooh, nope, that's not going to work because it has to go to a land with not trying something new. We're <laughs> trying something old. Uh, shoot. No disease. Let me gain a power card. I'm going to do growth option three, which is what my normal course of action is. I got a little excited for no reason here. So we have options obviously i need i want a animal tag or a fire tag so gift of nature's connection target spirit gains either two energy or two of a single element their choice that's interesting that actually might work really well the other ones are gather up to one exp uh, blight, isolate target land. When blight is added to a target land, it does not cascade. 
Moving blight around could be useful for sure. Infested Echo Fires has an animal tag. If target land has disease, one damage to each invader. We will have a lot of disease around. The target land is mountains or wetlands. So it's or. The target land is mountains or wetlands. You can do one fear and add a disease. Don't hate that. And rats scout for raids by darkness. For each Dahan, one damage to city or town. Or one fear got up to two Dahan. Wow, I really like these cards. I really like these cards. That's crazy. All right, I'm going to gain one. Before I forget, I'm getting one energy for this and one energy for this. If target land has disease, one fear and one disease. The gift of nature's connection won't actually help me this turn if I want to play that. So, right, let's rule that out. Although that was that's a really interesting card. Has disease, one damage to each invader. And it has a water tag too. I'm still gonna add a presence. I'm probably gonna play two cards. Let me add a presence here. Cause that's what makes sense. And for each Dahan, I'm gonna take Rats Scout for raids by night. Do I want to do the add a, add a disease? The benefit there is I can actually knock off an explorer out here, but I'll probably have other opportunities to do that. It might make sense for me just to go ahead and add a disease. It's cheaper than the, the, the fetid breath spreads, fetid breath spreads infection. Man, it's such a gross, I mean, the more you think about that card, it's like, oh, that's really gross. Cool. So I'll add a disease to a land with presence that will be f fine yeah i like that i like that a lot all right cool so i'm taking infested aquifers i'm going to play that in fiery uh, vengeance that's going to cost me one energy i'm going to remove my destroyed presence from the game i generate a fear i do one damage now the invaders do two damage, but they still only have one health. So I'm going to try to kill him. Oh, sense of impending disaster. He's going to move to another place. I will move him to that wetlands. All right, so that's done. So I get another fear for that because of sense of impending disaster. I have none of my innates, obviously. And we will then go to the invader phase. The invader phase, first thing we're going to do jagged earth rules we flip over the top event card without actually carrying it out and then we will do the build action i'm gonna let this build happen here what does that do that generates me a fear and there is nothing to build in land seven anymore right so that actually worked out fairly well and now we will do the explorer action we are exploring it to sands so we get an explorer here there's a beast there so obviously i'm super aware of that and then there's going to be an explorer that enters land three invader cards advance and now we will do our slow actions i can add a disease to i can do one damage to each invader there there's really no point i will just add a disease to a land where i have presence i will add a disease to land six makes some sense all right, so time's gonna pass. I'm going to put these over here. We go back to our growth option. So I am gonna to wanna to put two presents on the board and I'm gonna put two presents in land number two. And I'm gonna let that ravage and that will be fine. All right, or I could, I could actually skip invader. Ah, do I wanna do that? So much the ponder. Maybe I won't let that ravage. Question is, do I want to? So it has to go. Um, I could actually reclaim again, but then I won't have, I guess my, my special abilities aren't awesome for me this turn. 
So it might make sense just to reclaim again. And not reclaim, to do growth option three again, which is which is very different than how I normally play this spirit. And then I could do this and this. And I could do that. Huh, that's an interesting combo. All right, I'm going to add a presence to land number five. I'm gonna get an energy for that. I'm gonna get an energy for this. I'm going to gain a power card, which is the only thing I haven't done because of that growth option. We have uh, call the Dahan ways, replace one explorer with a Dahan. Ooh, if I have two moons, I get to replace a town with a Dahan. It does have an animal tag. That's interesting. Gift of living energy, target spirit gains one energy, plus one energy if target spirit is not yourself. If you have at least three, at least two sacred places, target spirit gains plus one energy. Uh, renewing rain. Yeah, that has a fire tag, but I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really interested in an energy grab right now. Renewing rain. If target uh, land is a jungle or a sand, remove one uh, blight. Probably not going to be helpful. And then blood draws predators. All right, look, another way to get rid of explorers. Uh, that could be really interesting. So we'll go with that. But then that raises the question of what I want to do. So part of me, oh man, part of me wonders if I let that ravage, because I can have it skip in, in invader actions, but I think I let it ravage, because I think No, I right, call the Dahan ways is nice, but it doesn't have the fire element. Right, I'll go back to what I originally thought I was going to do. We're going to stay healthy on it for a little bit. Why not? Why not kids? All right, cool. So I can target a land one away from my presence, target a land, target land must have disease and I will generate a fear. That is nice. And then invaders will skip ravage actions this turn. Cool. That is slow. And then I have unlocked, I could have. Yeah, I unlocked the third fire element on my on my board here. I'm going to get the one damage in a land where I have presence. And that target land must also have a uh, city or a uh, or a town to use it. But I have some ideas, as you'll see. Oh, shoot. Uh, my ideas are bad. Oh, no, they're not terrible. I can still do it. That's going to be a problem next turn, but I will have to deal with that next turn. Right. All right, cool. All right, so let's go to the invader phase. We are going to go to the event card. It is Numinous Crisis. All right, the spiritual energy of the island weakens as life's connections grow ever more tattered. You may. We can either draw strength from it while we can. We remove a blight from the blight card. Then if the blight card is not flipped, we keep removing blight until it flips. No, this is just bananas. Or we can pour our strength into the island. Each spirit either pays two, three energy, forgets two power cards, or returns one of their presents to their tracks. Ooh. Uh, it's really bad, which does mean I also lose, I would lose the element. Oh, it's gross. I mean, obviously I can't. Uh, this is not good. I'm going to forget two power cards. 
I'm going to forget Fiery Vengeance and Infested Aquifiers. And that's it. When you forget a card, it could be in play, it could be whatever, but I, I, I don't I don't think it's a good idea to uh, to lose that fire. I don't have three energy, and I definitely am not letting that flip. So it's unusual, but here we go. Those are out. Neither of them have both fire and animal tags, so we might be reclaiming cards more often than we want to, but I just think that's the right move. And then we get to add a Blight to the Blight card. All right, Plagues bring fear and death, one fear per board with disease, and then two damage to Dahan in a land with disease. None of, I have disease in two lands. There are not any Dahan in either of those lands. And then careful defense when invaders ravage, if the land has Dahan, defend two. So that is carried out. There are no lands that are ravaging that have Dahan that I need to worry about. And then mimic the Dahan. Each player removes one explorer or town from a land with two or more Dahan. Yes, please. That guy goes away. Beautiful. So we're going to do the invader steps. We're going to do the ravage step. This line number two is not participating in ravage thanks to strike low with sudden fevers or struck, yeah, strike low with sudden fevers. And then nothing to ravage in land seven. We're building in land in sand. So the build step, there's nothing to build in land three. We put a town in land five. And then the explore step, we are adding one explorer to the wetlands and one explorer to the um yeah to the wetlands in number six and then one explorer to the wetlands in number one invader cards advance hmm so i can target a lamb with disease the real question is do i push these guys out here and then I do two damage because I, I can, I have to, I'm pushing from a land that I'm targeting. So I can only target two or I can target six. And because they have disease, I have to push two. So I basically be pushing either two explorers from land six or an explorer in a town from land six, or I'm going to be pushing an explorer in a town from land two. Obviously six is a little problematic. I do have a disease there, so I could prevent the build there next turn. Right. So it doesn't build a city. It's not the worst idea. I know we're ravaging in five. Let's, uh, all right, cool. So I'm going to target land two. I'm going to generate a fear for each disease. I get to push two explorers, towns and Don, and I can push a disease with it. I do not want to push the disease with it. And now I'm going to do savage revenge. I get one damage in a land with my presence that has cities or towns. I just put a town there, which is great because I pushed it from two. So I get one damage, but wait, it's my power. And there's a blight there that counts as a badlands. That is now two damage. I destroy that town and we generate a fear. Cool. So time passes. I'm going to go to my growth options. Mm -hmm. I can pick that off. So I might be ravaging in five. The biggest problem with that is if I do, it's going to destroy a Dahan or a, a, a beast. And then I'm going to have one on there. And you know, if there's ever any more on there than there are on the board, I'm a dead man. I don't have disease there. The one argument would have, if I was going to reclaim cards, I could have pushed in there put a disease. I think I risk it. Yeah, I definitely think I risk it. It's going to be tight. All right. Again, it brings much of character. We're just going to go all the way with it. So I'm going to put two presence on the board in lands with cities or towns or blight. So I'm going to put one presence here and one presence here let's get a presence over in land two it could come in handy i'm going to play these i get oh shoot i don't have enough money to play both of these uh, do not have enough money to play both of these but if i don't get well that's not good all right, I'm going to do growth option three again. <laughs> this is so nuts. It's a very weird game. 
Yeah, very, very, all right. I don't want to reclaim cards. It's not going to help me anyway. If this had disease, I probably would, because then I could play Strike Low with Sudden Fevers. But can't, so we're going to generate, we're going to gain a power card. Do, do, do. There's no Don there. Oh, these are garbage. Uh, well, it's not what I wanted, but I think I can make it work. So elusive ambushes, dam one damage or defend four. It has a fire tag, but the land, the target land has to have Dahan. The second one has favor of the sun and starlit dark. It is defend four, one away from your sacred place, push up to one blight. If you have a second sun, you generate a fear. Another of those have suns, so who cares? The other one is when I have the third one is thriving choke fungus. <laughs> so great uh it doesn't have either a fire or a animal tag but it's a slow power one away from your sacred place target land has to be a jungle or a wetland add one disease and one badlands well that's super interesting i don't like the limitation of where you can use it though and then finally and i will probably be reclaiming cards for next turn oh man because the disease oh but if i if i remove that uh, maybe I won't. We'll see. Uh, and then the last one is Target Spirit gathers one Dahan into one of their lands. One damage in that land per Dahan present. And that is a slow power, which is bananas. So I think I think I defend land five because I just don't want to. I don't want to lose that beast. Right. I, I'm not gonna. I really want to have. My innate powers wouldn't do much good for me anyway this turn, so I just won't unlock them. This has none of the elements I want, but that is fine. I'm going to add a presence in land 5, because it's a nice central sacred place. We're good with that. And then I will get 1 energy because of the growth track, and then 2 because of the presence track. I'm going to play Favor of the Sun and Starlit Dark, and I will play... Call of the Dahan Ways, and might as well just start replacing some. It's kind of a throwaway turn in some ways, so it'll be a good opportunity to get rid of an Explorer and turn it into a Dahan. So I'm going to defend. My only fast power is Favor of the Sun and Starlit Dark. We're going to defend four in land number five, and I can push a Blight. I will save you, beastie. Don't have anything else. We're good. We go to the event card. It is search for new lands, and each land with at least two explorers. Push one explorer to an adjacent land without invaders. Well, that's gross. So this in six has to go to seven. I literally have no other option. There are invaders everywhere else. On each board, push one. Ah, the beast was going away. Anyway, push an explorer to an adjacent land with no blight. It does one damage there. Well, that's interesting. So we're going to go to land one because there's no blight. And we're going to do one damage there. And what happens? Sense of impending disaster. This guy just gets scared away. I'll send him here and I get a fear. So I'm going to get a fear card out of that, which is nice. And Enduring Ravage in every land, defend one per Dahan in the land. All right, rock on. So that's done. The fear card we just earned, Terra level one. Each player removes one explorer from an inland land. Uh, sure. From an inland land. Uh, there's a lot I want to remove. That's fine. We'll remove the one from land seven. Sure, and we're good. So Ravaging in Sands were defended. It was attacking four again, because remember the explorers do plus one, because they're gross, and nothing to Ravage in land three. We're building in land one, no dice, building in land six. I'm gonna remove the disease instead of letting that happen, which isn't super ideal. But I think it makes more sense than allowing a city to build. And then we're going to go to the explore step. So we have to add the, on each board, we, again, we do the escalation first, unless it says after the explore step. So we have to do, add two explorers among lands with 
Dahan, or so among lands with beasts. So I'm going to add one in land eight. I'm going to add two in land eight, which seems a little bananas, but it makes sense. And then I'm going to explore into sand. So we're exploring into land three and we're exploring into land four. No, five. It's like four. It's just one more. This is going to go over here. And now this says I can actually, in a land with Dahan, I can replace an explorer into a Dahan. And I do have two moons, so I could actually replace a town into a Dahan. It doesn't make much sense to do that against uh, Russia. Uh, and actually, I don't have any Dahan in lands that have towns anyway. So I'm, I am let that guy, you know, I could make that into a thing and I want to build. I did get new information. No, I didn't because I, I saw the escalator. Maybe I will put one here so that doesn't match. And then I'll just turn this into a Dahan because it's one away from where I have presence. So yeah, I got no, no new information because I saw the escalator and I knew I was exploring into sands. So it makes sense. I don't. I just won't have to worry about that building. And uh, it's one less land to, uh, to worry about. So I have one explorer in one, one in two, one in four, two in five, one in six, and two in eight. All right, no other slow powers. We are now. I don't know if I reclaim cards. I'm definitely am not gotten a lot of disease around. I think I, I might let six blight on purpose. I have that extra that extra thing on the card there. Could get another power card and then reclaim cards next turn, which probably makes more sense. I don't think these are all that helpful. And again, if I let it blight on six, oh, it's ravaging in one. That was my problem. That's why I didn't do that. Yeah, I'm gonna sh shoot. Unfortunately, none of the lands I have that have a Dahan have disease so it's ravaging in one since it's ravaging in one i'll go back to this and i'll replace one of these so i just i went back and rethought that again i got no new information so instead i put two and eight this would have explored and then i just turned one exp using call the dahan ways i replaced one of the explorers with a dahan in eight and now i do have to worry about this building but you know it is what it is i have some options there the two dahan there you know and i still have this defend four card which isn't exactly what i'm looking for elements wise but it's it could work in a pinch here one i could just put a disease there I haven't unlocked that yet, which is weird. <laughs> Three turns in. So I usually do that growth option two pretty regularly. All right, I think I'm doing growth option three a fourth time, which is just crazy. Yeah, five's, five's, oh, six might blight. Five's going to build a city. None of that is great. None of that is great. All right, I'm going to get a power card. And we're doing a growth option three again for the first time. So I get one energy from there. I'm going to get two energy from the presence track. Ooh. That's the, the domestic, domesticated animals go berserk is a really nice card. That defend five is super, super cool uh mesmerized tranquility so yeah it's a uh, domesticated animals go berserk you have to use it on a land where you're presence target land has to have cities or towns which is fine if you have three moons you can add a beast mesmerized tranquility each invader does minus one damage can be really useful against russia you get to isolate the target land it does have a beast tag Unquenchable Fames, one fear, one damage to cities or towns. Evaders do not heal damage at the end of the turn. If you have two fire, you add a Badlands. Interesting card. And one spirit, 
A spirit with presence. Oh man, I'm not going to get either of my innates again. This is, that's not good. A spirit with presence on target board may add one of the destroyed presence, gather up the two uh, Dahan, push a blight. I think I take the messy animals, go berserk. Because that will take care of three or five next turn. The problem is it's going to do nothing for me this turn. I could actually defend. I could defend six. I'm going to reclaim cards. I could defend three or five next turn. That probably makes some sense. Since I'm not going to get my innates, I'm not going to add a presence because there's no point unlocking the animal. I'm going to put a disease in land five and prevent that from building a city. Again, the third growth option, you can add a disease or a presence. I'm adding a disease. So I'm going to play these two cards. Fetid breath spreads infection. Domesticated animals go berserk. I'm going to defend five in land six. Do, do, do. I have none of my innate powers, which is going to catch up to me eventually for sure. And then we're going to, and one of the, yeah, I just, I don't think it makes any sense to build a city and, and let a city build in land five. Just no sense at all. Yeah, we'll see. Because the other option is like, I get this presence off. So the next turn when I reclaim, I will have access to my innates. Do you like getting a disease there? And the epidemics run rampant. It can be really nice. Oh, and I can't add presence next turn. Yeah, I'm glad I rethought this. I need presence there next turn. So I'm going to add presence one away and not add the disease. We'll let that city go. And I should, if I have my innate powers, once they start, once they start getting unlocked, I should be able to, to wipe out a city in land five pretty quickly at some point. Uh, not that far from now. All right, fine. So I rethought that. think that's better. We'll see. Now I have the information. No more changing. All right. We are in stage two or three. So local diaspora. Ooh. Well, that took care of it. <laughs> in, the, in a single land with the most invaders, push one explorer town to each adjacent land. Now I have to do each adjacent land. So each, uh, what's the rest of the card? Beast Prowl. Each beast generates a fear if invaders are present, moves to adjacent land if not, and then push two. So I have nothing going for me in land one. So if I push either an explorer or a town into land one when it ravages, that's definitely going to blight. If I had a presence there, I might let that happen, but that's not bueno. That's no bueno. So I'm going to actually move this explorer to land seven, this explorer to land four, and this town to land six. Do I want two explorers there? Probably not. I'm going to move this explorer to land, this town to land four and this explorer to land six. That's just going to make a little bit more sense. All right. Each uh, beast prowl, each beast generates a fear if invaders are present. There are invaders present in land eight. And then I get to move, if invaders are not present, it moves to an adjacent land. I will move this beast to land four. And then on each board, push two Dahan from a land with disease to a land without disease. I have no Dahan in a land with disease, which this is the most unusual game of Vengeance ever played. You're welcome. So we are ravaging. The invaders are not ravaging on land one. They're ravaging on land six. However, we're defended five. They're ravaging six because there's two explorers. So two for each explorer and then two for the town. But we have defended them because we have domesticated berserk animals because of course we do we are building. So since the diaspora happened, there is no longer anything to build in land five. We just get a town in land three. I mean, I really need to let, I, I mean, I'm not one of the aspects of vengeance is I'm not setting the traps to get more disease on the board. And I'm not really sure if that's good or bad right now. Um, but we'll see. And then we're going to go to this. It's a level three card. So we're exploring into wetlands and sands. All right, invader cards advance. Now we got a bit of a problem because we do have three explorers in land six, and that is going to be, that would also be considered to be a sands next turn if we don't address that somehow. 
And there's no disease there, so I can't target it with epidemics run rampant. I can defend there next turn with the domestic domesticated animals go berserk. They're also ravaging here, which is super gross. Alright, I'm gonna generate a fear because a fetid breath spreads in action. Oh, one thing I did, when I did that different, I did have level one of this. So I could have destroyed, did one damage in a land with disease. So I could have just done the one, oh, I would have scared him. He would have gone somewhere else. I would have not have put him in one. Could have put him in four. That would have made the most sense. I wouldn't have wanted to put him here because I knew that was ravaging the next turn. So I would have just put him to four. So that's another fear. Sorry about that. I had, um, Epidemics were on rampant because I had the one fire and the three animal tags. Uh, and that's just a fear again because sense of impending disaster and putting him in four would have also made sense because there's a blight there. And again, that counts as the Badlands and blah, blah, blah. I digress. All right. So I've already generated the fear because of fetid breath. I mean, ask my wife. My fetid breath is, is very fearful, I guess. And now I need to add a disease somewhere Ursh. it's a very weird game I will add the disease in land number six because I think I can do some cool things next turn with the disease there all right so I paid for that energy goes away time passes I'm going to have to reclaim my cards I'm going to gain one energy for the growth option two energy for the presence track and I'm going to gain another power card we will stick with the minor powers all right so we have sucking ooh, sucking ooze two fear if are present isolate target land no thank you uh, encompassing war defend two in every land where target spirit has presence Scream disease into the wind. Target spirit gets plus one with all their powers. Once it's turned, if the target spirit uses a power targeting a land, they may add a disease to that land. Hello. And it has animal tag. Doesn't have both. And the last one is, is uh, right of lands rejections and In, invaders do not build. You have to target a land with this, uh, with, um, what's the word? It's going to come to me. Give me a second. Uh, Don, uh, and then one fear per city or town or one fear per Don, whichever is less. Scream disease into the wind. Especially I do not have a lot of disease on the board, which is problematic. So I will take that now. What am I doing here? I'm definitely using domesticated animals go berserk. So the real question, I, I mean, I really, I think I need to, yeah, I need to start using my innates. Is there anything I want to skip ravage actions? There's no disease in land five. So that's a problem. Building in one, building in six, building in five, building in three. Also a problem. All right, I'm going to play those two. That's going to give me the first level of both my innates. Let's see how this plays out. So I'm going to target a land with disease. And I can do one damage per disease there. Obviously, I've not gathered a lot, but I'm going to actually do one damage here. There's no Dahan there to damage, so that's fine. And then instead of being destroyed, he's a scurred. I generate a fear, and I will push this guy to the mountains. I don't think it makes sense for me to push him anywhere else. All right, five's ravaging. Well, five's ravaging anyway, and they're building. But what I did was it no longer matches the Ravage card. I'll push him to I'll push him to five. I'm gonna blight there anyway, and it's 
it's ravaging. There's no sense risking seven matching the the, the evader card next turn. If uh, this is mountains, which it definitely could be. All right, so that's fine. Now we're gonna take, we're gonna do one fear because of domesticated animals, and we're gonna defend five in a land with cities and towns. I'm gonna defend five in land three where I have presence. They're attacking six there. And then I have plague bearers and savage revenge ready, ready to go for the slow power phase. Event card. Terror level one, temporary truce in lands with Dahan. Ugh. All right, that's awful. I hate this. All right, that's fine. Whatever. A one, one Dahan in one city or town did not participate in the ravage. So this town and this Dahan are trucing because that's what they do. So that's fine. Prey on the Helis in each land with the beast. Uh, one damage per beast. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do uh, one damage and four. Sense of impending disaster kicks in. That generates a fear. And again, the each exception, Jagged Earth has a really good job explaining it. So each is now, this triggers in every land that has a beast. So then I'm gonna do one damage in eight. A sense of impending disaster kicks in, and I will have to move him to seven anyway. So glad I did not push the other one to seven because that would have three, and it would have been seven or six. So I would have been putting three in one of them, in one of them either way. So it just kind of worked out that I did not add another land to the ravage. And then speak of spirit's anger for each board. One fear if any Dahan are in a land with towns or cities there is i have a dahan in land three and there is a town so that's another fear so that's a second fear card we are terror level two again we've not destroyed much but again we've scared enough invaders explorers away that you see how that fear starts to generate and now we will do our fear cards one defend three in all coastal lands oh, that's pointless and then two on each board or terror level two sorry defend six and all Ooh, we are terror level two defend six in all coastal lands i'm basically not build cities in coastal lands this turn well that's nice actually so invaders do not build cities in coastal lands so we're going to prevent a city from going into three and then terror level two on each board remove a town i will remove this town Sure. Not building there anyway. No, I'm going to leave that town. I'm going to remove this town, even though it's not participating. Stop that build. Yeah. Because then I could totally wipe everything out of the sands. I don't want to worry about one less line for me to worry about next turn. All right, I'm removing that town. And that's fine. We are going to our ravage actions. So we're ravaging in land three. This Dahan is not participating. We're defended five. The Dahan retaliate. So retaliation is two. That's enough to kill one of these guys. But again, sense of impending disaster. The first one just gets moved and I'll generate a fear. And I'm going to move him to land four because that seems to make the most sense these days. All right. So the temporary truce has been addressed. And I will take this thing off the Dahan. And now we are ravaging in five. So I put a blight on five that destroys a presence. And then in place of that destroyed presence, I can add a disease. Isn't that magical? Now we go to build. Oh man. All right. So we're building in land one for sure. I can prevent the build in land six. I'm going to allow the build in land five. There's nothing to build on land three, which is the whole point of what I did. So I'm allowing to build on land five. And since I allowed the build, I get a fear because of my special rule. 
All right, this is done. I had a million to defend in the coast. We now do, so this is done. We now do the explore card. We are, well, first we have to add two explorers to lands with <laughs> B. So I'm gonna put one there and one here. So obviously that's gonna match the Ravage card next turn. And then we're exploring into jungles. Oh, it's super bad. Actually, I'm gonna add both here because of the escalator and then the explorer action, one goes there and I'm gonna add one here. So yes, I know I have five. Yeah, so I basically, it was uh, one and two and what I did was I added three to four because I had a two because the escalator and then one explored into each because there's a source everywhere. So obviously I have five explorers in land four, which is a problem. All right, so I can t plague bearers. I can target a land with disease and I can push two explorers and or towns per disease. I will push, let me do Savage Revenge first. I'm gonna do two damage in land number four because it has a town. And because I have Blight there, that does mean that I'm actually, I'm doing, so it's one damage I had the first level, then plus one because the Blight acts as a bad land. So I'm doing two damage. I'm gonna destroy one of these explorers and I could push the other into land two. And because it's because of sense of impending disaster, that gets me a fear. Plague Bearers is now at issue, I'm going to push, oh, those two explorers are gross. Yeah, I'm gonna push this town and this, ex oh man. Uh, I can make it not ravage somewhere. These are all a problem. All a problem for sure. I'm gonna push, all right, I'm gonna take that back. Let me, I'm rethinking this. So I'm actually, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do two damage in land five. That's gonna generate, that's because it's one damage plus one because I have a blight in five as well. So that destroys the town. And then I'm gonna use plague bearers. That's gonna allow me to push two. I'm gonna push them all into four because of plague bearers, I get one fear and I'm gonna push the disease into four as well, right? So I targeted land five, I generated a fear, and I pushed the two explorers that were left and I could push one disease into four. And I'll probably just make sure that four just doesn't participate even though it's now going to match, but now I only have two lands that are gonna be ravaging as opposed to the uh, five that I was looking at since the jungle now counts. All right, this, these come over. I'm going to add presents. I can add, I'm gonna definitely need to add two presents. I have to get to these three card plays. I'm gonna add two presents into land number one. All right, and I'm gonna get two energy and now I'm going to pick my three card plays. Defend four. Well, that's interesting. I'm playing Strike Low with Sudden fear, Fevers for sure. And then I have two more cards. That's, I can generate, I can do five damage and four, which is kind of exciting if I can get myself a third. Yeah, that should work. I'm gonna play Scream Disease into the wild. I'm just, I'm kind of playing the innate power game. We're definitely gonna go Blighted, I think, but I think it's worth the risk. So all my energy is gonna go here. Let's figure out my elements. So I have two uh, waters. I'm gonna have one two fires so i'm not going to get the savage revenge like i had last turn but that's fine 
and then I'm going to get one, two, three, four animal tags. And that's going to be enough to give me the second level of epidemics run rampant. I'm going to, I could do two damage per disease plus one because I have a blight. So I can do three damage in a land with disease. I'm going to destroy this city in land two because target land has to have disease. If there are Dahan there again, every attacking the Dahan separately, but I'm getting the last, I'm getting the last uh, city off the board. That's two fear. I mean, I'm, I'm not that far from a tarot three victory, which is bananas. I'm going to generate another fear. And invaders are going to skip. They have to target a land with disease. Invaders are going to skip ravage actions. I'm going to make that skip ravage actions in land four. So those are my fast powers. I'm blighting in six. I'm blighting in one. Oh, and uh, target spirit gets plus one. Um, once this turn, after target spirit uses a power targeting a land, they may add a disease to that land. So I'm going to add a disease to land since I use, I'll add another disease to four because I used strike low with sudden fevers there and having two disease there makes a little bit of sense because then if I, I get epidemics run rampant again next turn, I can do some cool things. All right. So that's fine. I really only have three towns left in this. That's bananas. It's really bananas. All right, cool. Event, we're still healthy. It's crazy. Terror level two for the rest of this turn. Ignore strife on each invader. <laughs> That's totally fine. On each board, destroy two explorers among lands with beasts. I think I use this to chase some fear. So I would destroy this guy. Instead of being destroyed, sense of impending disaster. Oh, so the power. All right. So even if I destroy from different places, the power is only going to give me one fear. So it's two, two fears. So this one power, I'll just, I'll make this guy go. Oh, well, that's going to blight anyway. So I'm going to move this guy here and destroy one. Four is not doing anything anyway. That's fine. And then when invaders ravage, the land has Dahan defend two. So I'm defending two here, but remember they're ravaging four because of Russia. Cool. So hopefully this works out. Uh, each player may gather a town into a coastal land. Yes. No, sorry. Uh, terror level two. Each player may gather a Sort of town, defend two in all coastal lands. So I'm not going to gather and I'm just going to defend four in land one. So that worked out fairly well. And then this one, each player chooses a different land to isolate. Also defend two in those lands. I will isolate land number. Basically preventing any explorers. That's fine. I will isolate land number six and it's defended too, but who really cares? Right. I, that, yeah, that, that blight was there for the beginning of the game. I'm just making sure I didn't forget to kill a beast earlier. All right. So we now go to the invader actions. Now, again, the, uh, land four matches because it has a hundred explorers, but there's not going to be any ravaging in that land. Thanks to strike low with sudden fevers. Land one is ravaging. I'm defended four. the Dahan are retaliating. I'm just chasing fear. So I'm going to destroy that town and that's good. And then we're ravaging in. So there's nothing in three to ravage. I think five, the ravage are ravaging in six. That's going to be a blight. That's going to make me, that's going to allow me to add a disease because I destroyed a presence there and that's fine. 
building i'm going to allow the build in four so since i allowed the build because i could prevent it but i'm going to allow the build i generate a fear and we get a city there yeah we're definitely reclaiming cards and then we're going to do the explore action we're exploring into mountains there is a source in four so now that has three do three uh explorers so that also matches there's a source for two there's a source for four there is no source for eight because again i have isolated six so that's fine invader cards advance so that's the nice thing about ravage is again now we actually have jungles and i won't have to worry about that at all so the, a lot of things worked out there that eight is not a problem i will take this isolate off because it's no longer doing anything helpful i'll take this defend off and i get to replace Ooh, great i will target a land that has dahan and i will turn one explorer into a dahan with call of the dahan ways and now this no longer matches all right so we're going to times in the past i'm going to reclaim my cards this matches anyway, so there's no point in having a marker there. I reclaim my cards. I'm going to get an energy. I'm going to get two energy. We get a power card. I'm five fear away from a tower level three victory. So anything that gives me that is bonus. Uh, I think this has both the elements I would want. That's fine. So how can I get to Terra level and level two of Epidemic Strong Rampant with my cards? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to need three cards that have, oh, I can only spend three. All right, well, that's three. That's three. That's, those only cost one each. And I have the water. Is there a better use of my cards? Is there a better use to my cards? No, I think I'm going to get it pretty easy. Yeah, I might as well put this in because I'm not even going to get the slow powers. Not even getting the slow powers here. All right, one, one, one. I'm going to target a land where I have uh, presence. No, that's fine. I'm going to generate one fear. And defend five. And then I'm going to use, uh, I have, again, the one water. The, that's a, this dies garbage. I don't know why I always use it. The one water. I have the two, I actually have three fire and I have uh, four uh, animals again. So I get level two of this. I'm going to do one damage per disease. Oh, and I targeted this land, so I'm going to put another disease there. Once this turn, after target spirit targets land, I get to add a disease. So now I have three disease there. I get to do two damage per disease, uh, plus the one because my blight, the blight there counts as bad land. So I'm doing seven damage in this land. So this is three, four, five, six, and seven. Remember, I'm going to scare this guy. He's just going to go to three. So that generates a fear. This other one's destroyed, and then I'm going to get three more fear because I destroyed a city and a town. And that is a terror level three victory. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, what just happened? <laughs> this is the crazy thing about vengeance is, I mean, you didn't even see what makes vengeance so crazy. Like why I fell in love with him and his offensive powers. I mean, like literally I destroyed level four Sweden on my first try and it's like, oh, I love the spirit. Uh, but I think that what you saw in this playthrough and how weird it was is more of a testament to how russia changes everything about this game in a very cool way don't get me wrong but it changes everything in how you think about this game and what you need to do and how you know somewhat it's easier to generate fear because now one damage is a fear often uh, as opposed to uh other you know other power other adversaries where one damage is often garbage so it just changes the calculus it changes how things go that was a very weird sequence i'm so curious about comments on that i, I i'm sure i did not play optimally uh 
but I, I think I'm happy with my thought process, obviously a little results dependent, but I think it just made sense. And then you're just jockeying these explorers around, you know, obviously we're, we're matched up in six two. but yeah, that, that blighted last turn. So this would have actually also been ravaging, but just the, where I was at, I was like, all right, we're going to get a, I, we, I was pretty confident of getting a Terra level, uh, three victory as a fast, uh, in, in the fast power phase. Um, it just kind of worked out. Um, I mean, if I needed to, if the math was off by a fear or two, I mean, there are other ways. I mean, I could have done this defend five here. Um, and then I could have done one damage to a city. Oh yeah. I actually never use quick near struggles, which is good. Cause it actually, it only, it'd be one damage only where you have a sacred place. And obviously I don't have a sacred place. So, um, I wouldn't have actually been able to do that that defend, but I didn't need it. I just wanted the elements the way it played out. Right. So that was kind of lucky that I, I actually didn't need that damage. Cause then I would have had to rethink. I'm, I'm pretty sure there are other things I could have done here. I mean, this was just an extra fear, but I wouldn't have the money for that, but you know, we would have, we would have made it. I think, I think it was there one way or the other, but I never, you know, just because that innate power is so strong, you know, getting up to that second level of epidemics run rampant, and then you attack on that plus one because of the blight. I mean, it's, it's a big, big play. So, oh, uh, whoo. All right. Well, well, uh, everyone at this point, I, I'm guessing I, I, I I'm going to do level. I'm not sure yet. I'm, I'm going to find her will already be on the, the, the site by the point that you see this. Um, my next spear coming up is going to be shifting memory of ages. Excited to take a deep dive into that one. We are now in the back half of the Jagged Earth Spirits. We've gone through six. Uh, so six more to go. Kicking it off with, with uh, shifting memory of ages. I will stick at level four. And I will probably just totally randomize between all seven of the adversaries uh, and just start doing it that way. I will, I'm going to take a break from Russia though. We're not doing Russia next time. Uh, <laughs> we are very much not doing Russia next time, but, uh, any of the other six, I think would be super fun. I, I mean, you felt fun relative when it comes to Habsburg's, uh, adorable mechanic, but, uh, especially with the spirit that I'm still going to be learning a little bit, but this was cool. Um, I thank you for all the, the support of this channel, the likes, the comments, watching some ads, uh, my patrons, uh, my patrons, again, I cannot, um, you know, thank them enough as far as they're just allowing me to spend more and more time with this channel and continue to try to churn out better content and more of it. So, uh, that is it. Any questions, comments, epiphanies, put them in the comment section below. I will get back to you and until next time, happy gaming.